All right, demons, we've all done this before and we're gonna do it again. So we're just gonna to put together a series of a few sort of mobility and stability style exercises for you guys to work on during this two week lockdown. Work on them now, try and take the niggles away. What I last thing want you doing is coming back from this two week lockdown, playing and having our injury rates skyrocket even higher than what they currently are. Minimal equipment necessary, possibly a TheraBand, uh, possibly a step and a small weight if you have it at home, that would be absolutely amazing. And of course, reach out if you want any specific individual things worked out for you. Between Lily and myself, we can easily get some things going for you. And of course, we're open essential services always, so you can still come in and see us if you need to. First of all, it's super important, guys, that you are always warming up. So for us, our biggest focus for you guys, what we found in our screening results is through the fronts of your hips, keeping them mobile, keeping down through the ankles mobile, and that thoracic spine, keeping that moving. If we keep those things going, you're, in, you're gonna be already 10 steps ahead. So our goblet squats, okay? Start as simple as you want. Coming down into that goblet position. Key is to push out nice and wide with those hands. You can use that prayer type position. Now what we wanna try and do is keep as upright as possible, okay? Whilst you're holding this. Now I want you to really relax, breathe and go deeply into this position. As you start to feel comfortable, if you've held it for up to about a minute, we can start to add our thoracic rotation. So from here, what we're gonna be doing, place one hand on the inside towards the other foot, other hand looking up and following. Coming back down. Okay, repeating towards the other side. Do at least five on each side from this position. After you've done, five on each side, bring yourself back in to that goblet squat and feel that you can actually sink so much deeper into it and get so much more upright. Really, really important, as I said, for opening that anterior hip mobility and for your lower back as well. Your next mobility warm-up drill after our goblets you're gonna be doing is more so we're gonna be going from a downward dog into a pigeon, okay? So I'm gonna show you from side on. So get yourself hands down, legs as wide as you need to, to make it comfortable. From here, bring yourself up, make those hips go up nice and high into the sky. Try and get those heels planted down. After that, bringing one leg up to that 90-90 position. Get that knee drop, open up, big breath in, and out, sink into that front hip. From here, back up towards our downward dog and back in, opposite leg, 90-90. Keep that switch going for me. Performing at least 10 on each side. Really good warm up, core, hips, and upper limb strength as well. Okay guys, the hip switch makes a comeback. Another really important warm up and mobility exercise to help open up through the hips and it also help you engage to your core. Try not to use your upper body, keep upright as you're doing it. Have enough space as you're gonna see in a minute. The 90-90 setup from here, elevate up, push through and open up those hips. Hold it there for a second if you need to, if you're feeling excessively tight. Coming down, switching those hips over and again coming up. And again, hold it there as long as you need to. Down, hip switch over, up out. Repeat this again for around that two minute mark for me. Two minutes of each of these exercises is plenty to help you open up mobility. This warm up is essentially for back extension, back rotation, hip extension as well, which in so many of you guys and girls I've found is restricted in range. It's called the scorpion, really simple. Get down the ground. Okay, arms up. All we're gonna do from here is lift one leg up, rotate back and around, touch the ground, place it down. Repeat on the other side. Now try your best not to lift your whole upper body off for me. It's a lower body exercise. Just 
go back to our dancing days. We're gonna go from arabesque or a single leg RDL into a 90-90 hip lock position. Again, great for warming up eccentrically, the glutes, the hamstrings, and getting you to switch on the core. I want your arms elevated the whole time as you do this. Okay, so from here, start on one leg again for about 30 seconds to a minute first. Coming forward as deep as you can go into the arabesque. And then quick change, hip lock up. And again. Quick change. And I really want you to lock and hold that one. Show you for the other side. And like me, you're gonna find one side's harder than the other. So you've got the change in pace from slow, controlled, hip lock. Love the world's greatest stretch. It actually is the world's greatest stretch. So get yourself set up into the position, okay? Into that nice deep lunge. Hands need to be in line with your heels. From here, open up one hand, rotate and come down. Rotate, come down. Opening hips, getting some thoracic rotation as well. Once you come out of that, Give yourself a breather into downward dog. Swap sides. And really feel that opening. Downward dog. Downward dog to high plank is also a great mobility and core exercise. Towards a two minute total. This next exercise is more a warm up for sort of our upper body. You want to be using either a mini band or a TheraBand double over. I'm going to use the TheraBand. If you're using the TheraBand double over, grab it and pull it tight. Essentially, we're going to be coming over the head, okay? So, in that side on position, comfortable stance, hip hinge forward. You should be able to maintain your back with three points of contact. So if I was to pop a piece of dowel, we should be able to have the back of our head, mid thoracic spine, and bottom all touching that piece of dowel. So nice hip hinge, overhead, do not let the neck drop forward. Down back behind, and up. Try and maintain this position, core switched on. Feel those shoulder blades engaging and working. to get about that 15 to 20. Another I've forgotten muscle is our hip flexors in priming them. You guys need to prime those hip flexors before you can do any other base exercises. So coming, find a wall, up nice and tall, you can see them on my toes. We need to do this with purpose. So we start with one leg high and then quick change. Quick change. Drive with purpose. Okay, do about 30 seconds with one side, then swap. Quick change. Quick change. I really want you to go with purpose for our 90, 90 degree angles, okay? Don't, don't go and do this too, too fast and just try and get it done with, over and done with. Really important, keep those hip lock, keep that core and driving, as I said, with that purpose, so that when we go off and sprint, you're so much, 
easier for you. So for some extra oomph for our hip band drive exercise, grab that mini band, okay? Pop it round your feet. Now, this is quite a hard mini band. Make sure it's not too hard. You will come and drive from the same sort of a position and hold it up. It is a really hard workout. Again, cardio wise, if you do it enough, as well as strength wise. Make sure again, you alternate with both feet, okay? Super hard. So we all need to earn the right to decelerate before we can actually accelerate. So many of our injuries are in a decelerate phase and also an explosive acceleration. So it's so important we get these drills down pat. Again, really great warm ups. They're called tall to shorts. So do the doubles first. So coming up nice and tall, up as high as you can, and explode down with the landing. What you wanna watch is your knee position. Don't want any of this, or don't want weight shifting more towards one side. So again, really, 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 really tall, to short, exploding down. From there, we wanna then work on single leg lands. So from tall to short, okay? I really want that shock absorption. I want you to pause and hold it. We've had so many landing and decelerative based injuries that it's so important that you guys are working on this stuff. Okay, we all know how important calf strength is. So this next calf combination, I need you to do each limb to fatigue. There's three different things, a single leg calf raise, what we call a loaded calf raise, in the running rise position, and then there's also the soleus calf raise. Everyone forgets soleus, but we're finding at the moment at AFL, all of you are so incredibly weak, which can increase our likelihood of having a calf related strain. So here's the combo. Single leg, really important. Two up, two down. Please do not rush these to fatigue. You'll focus on one leg first, then do the other. You can have support. So it'll be one, two up, one, two down. Don't let the heel touch before we go back up again. So as I said, performing this to that point of muscle fatigue. Straight away, once we've hit fatigue, pick up some form of a weight. I've got a brick. You now have your leg you're working on is now behind. Weight up in front, up on some sort of a step. Loaded calf raise. One, two up, one, two down. So at the moment, I'm still working my left leg. Again, repeat this until that absolute point of muscle fatigue. Straight away from there, you're flipping that right leg back, left leg now in front in the lunge position, rising up one, two, down one, two. Up one, two, down one, two. So we're now focusing on that soleus raise. Really important, you control that descent. Don't let it collapse down. Really good burn for this one. So that's our calf raise burner. You then want to flip that and do that again on the other side at about two sets to fatigue for each of that particular one. Adductor strength is so important and I really want you guys conditioning your adductors for the return post mini lockdown. So the Copenhagen exercise is such a simple one to set up at home. All I've got here is a chair and I have a towel just for cushioning on the elbow. Now, I'm not gonna make you do the program as it should be done in an off season. I really just want you guys starting to do some isometric holds, building up tolerance. Expect a little bit of dom, but it shouldn't be too much. So, set yourself up like I've got here. Come down onto your elbow. Have that leg supported at the moment to about the level of the knee. It gets harder if you go out. So if you've done this before, you can have more support than what I'm about to do. From here, other leg straight under. Core locked on, coming up, and literally just trying to hold this for as long as you can to the point of muscle fatigue. Once you've done that, come on down, have a rest, 
Do three sets on each side for me, just to that point of muscle fatigue. An elevated hamstring bridge is never used enough when it comes to rehab programming. It's such a simple exercise, but when you think about the amount of times that actual strains occur in AFL on the hamstring, and in this position, that's why we need to bridge in that position. Now, Nordics are what are shown to prevent injury. However, Nordic programming, which I guys have given you guys before, is best done in an off season, okay? In a full extent, because you'll be too sore if we train full Nordics at the moment, if we haven't been used to it. Some assisted Nordics are fine, but a lot of you don't have the equipment at home in order to do a proper assisted Nordic. So, the elevated hemi bridge. Again, all you need is a chair, have something to support, coming on, warming up with some doubles. After we've done our double warm up, move on to our singles. I really want the pace to be one, two up, one, two down. Your second set, we can work to explode up and control down, just to change up the tempo. to fatigue on one leg and then repeat to fatigue on the other. You can either do this next one with a wall like I've got behind me or up on a stool or a chair. So we're essentially doing a hip burner combination using a wall. Again, really good for quads and glutes. So find that position. You're going to drive that foot into the wall on the back leg. Front leg, weight is more so through the heel, okay? From here to start with, crossing hands over the chest, rotating around and back. It's actually much harder than it looks. Try not to rotate your legs as you're coming through. It's only our thoracic spine moving. It's called the glute wall burner. Do as many as you can to the point of fatigue on one side you're really going to get it in that glute then swapping over same thing on the other side really punches pack with that one. The Bulgarian split squat combo. So chair behind me or something in the form for your leg to go up against. Okay, so from here, the load is mainly in the front leg. You can do this with a kettlebell or a weight if you please. Idea is come down as far as you can, drive up. Do about, I said, to a set to fatigue. The front leg is gonna be what burns the most. After doing this, to help improve your spring, we can work on doing some little plyo jumps, okay? Put the weight down for this part. So from the split squat, really try hard to get that drive, get those running arms going as well, okay? Okay, swapping sides as well. Set it up right. Coming into and split squat first and then plyo drives really concentrating on that landing as you come down okay two minutes of those will really give you a bang for a buck pop yourself now into the lunge position we're going to be working on a little bit of stability but on thoracic and back extension so from here taking one hand reaching back around and trying to touch your heel or even better your toe again you are going to feel more restricted on one side compared to the other works the abs at the same time get you some thoracic and lumbar mobility do about a minute in one lunge position swap one over and get yourself going for a minute on the other your aim will be to be able to do this freely by the end of the two weeks. And tag us on your stories, just giving us a go. This particular warm up exercise 
is a movement challenge as well. What you're aiming to do is to hold the lunge position on one side whilst we control the other leg to a 90-90, forward and back without actually popping that leg down. So we are really working through our core and through our stability. Take your time. You will not get this first go. As I said, practice makes perfect with this particular exercise, okay? I'm gonna show you for the other side. So from that lunge, coming up, around, and back, down. Up, and around, back, down. Without actually popping that leg down. I said, really good to engage with the core at the same time as open up those hips a bit more. 